Hi, I'm Stephen Collette from Your Healthy House. I'm here on behalf of the International Institute of Building Biology and Ecology. Today we're in architect Brian Fuente's straw bale home that he built and designed himself. We're going to talk about natural construction and how the building science of natural construction differs from other types. Building science is important to all types of construction, be it stick frame, be it masonry, or be it natural construction, such as straw bale here, adobe, rammed earth, straw like clay. The physics applies, but the approaches to them differs. And that's what we're going to talk about today, how they work, how they can fail, and how they can improve health within the house. All buildings have vapor moved to them. In traditional stick frame construction, we use a vapor barrier on the warm side to help reduce that vapor movement so it doesn't cause damage to the building. In a natural construction, whether it's straw bale or adobe or clay straw, they don't have vapor barriers in them. They're actually vapor permeable. And this is a hard concept to grasp for many people. But these buildings have been around for thousands of years and they've stood the test of time. The importance is always in the details, but first we have to understand the science. Vapor permeability is about looking at the hygroscopicity, the hygric buffer capacity, and the vapor permeability. Now vapor permeability is just how easily it can actually move the water. So a vapor permeable or a vapor impermeable material can move it more or less. In a natural construction building, we use our clay plasters or our lime plasters or even a cementitious plaster to help reduce the amount of movement through the material. And we can control that by using different types of plaster. The other thing that natural buildings do is they can actually take that water in. The hygric buffering capacity what that means is it allows water, is how much water can it actually store safely. Now in a typical stick frame or even a metal frame construction, you can't really store a lot of water in one of those buildings in your stud wall at any situation. But in a natural building, you can store hundreds of gallons of water in a, t in a typical 2,000 square foot house. This allows the material to actually protect the whole building. It can safely store that water without causing damage. Now there is a limit as with all things, but it can safely store and when the conditions change, such as it stops raining or the bathroom dries out, that it'll actually release that moisture and let it back out safely. And these wall systems are dynamic in that principle and in that concept, and that's different. And so we have to be cautious when building them not to put a vapor impermeable paint on them or something like that. And that functions, that hygric buffer capacity. That's what differs between natural and, and stick frame construction. Masonry can store some water, but not as much as others. Bulk water plays a role in any building, no matter what construction type. It's important to manage bulk water and keep it away from the wall system. Bulk water falls from the sky. That's rain, that's snow, that's wind driven. And it comes up from the ground through groundwater and into basements. It doesn't matter what type of wall system you have. Natural buildings or conventional construction, they can't get that wet. With a natural building such as straw bale, such as straw clay or rammed earth, they can take a lot more water, because of its hygric buffer capacity, it can actually safely handle way more water than a stick frame could. It does have a reach, it does have a max, it will fail if it gets too much. But what it does is because it can store it and then release it, it's a safer bet, especially in extreme weather, which we're seeing in many locations, that it can handle the brunt. We still have to focus on the details and that's really important. And we still have to focus on managing the water away from any building system, whether it's vinyl sided or plastered. You need good overhangs. You need eaves troughs or gutters, downspouts extending far away, window wells, grating so it slopes away, 
All of these are really critical to keeping your building envelope dry. And it doesn't matter what kind of construction you use. So it's important to follow those details. Now, many natural building designers implement these as standard practice to help protect the wall systems. And so for those who don't have really big overhangs or better protection, you need to look at those details, where the water can get in, bulk water, liquid water, whether it be in a basement if you have one, or whether it be through sitting on a window ledge. So keep those in mind when you're looking around the house for bulk water failures and strategies on how to manage it. Air sealing is critically important, no matter what type of construction you use, whether it be stick frame, masonry, or natural. And that's because air leakage impacts both health and durability. When a building leaks air, it allows the potential for moisture to move through the wall system. It allows for that moisture to potentially condense from a vapor to a liquid. And that's critical. That's where we're going to get damage. That's where we're potentially going to get mold growth. That's where we're going to potentially get health impacts on the occupants inside. So it's important to focus on that, no matter what type of construction you use. Now with natural construction, it approaches it differently. They don't use uh, papers and peel and sticks. They use plasters for the most part. And they can be different types of plaster, be it lime, be it clay, be it cementitious. So it's important to inspect the plasters to make sure on the exterior of the building that they're in good shape. No heavy cracks, no major shifting. But the weak point is typically not through the whole wall system. The weak point's typically around any penetrations, windows and doors. So you want to have a good look at those to make sure that they're connected, whether it be by caulking, whether it be by a flashing detail, to make sure that we're not having separation at those joints, that we're not allowing moisture to get in. Because when the air leaks, it brings that moisture, especially in cold climates and humid climates, um, and that's where it can cause damage, simply because it's going to condense. Now again, the natural buildings can take a bit more of that moisture vapor condensing because of the storage capacity, but no building wants that to happen. So it's important when you're looking that you focus on those details. Some people come to natural construction for the environmental footprint, reducing your impact. Some people come to it because they want to be hands-on. Many people come to it because it's healthier. What makes it healthier? Well, having less manufactured materials does make a difference. We have less off-gassing of chemicals. But the materials themselves actually have a positive impact on the air quality within a space. Natural plasters can actually improve the air quality. Clay is a common one as an interior finish. And for many of you, you may be familiar with having a clay mud mask on your face. And what that does is that clay actually pulls oils and junk out of our face. Likewise, in a wall system, that wall can absorb and adsorb moisture and then re-release it, improving our relative humidity and overall comfort in the house. And that's really important. But it can also take and neutralize some chemicals in the air. Those two strategies are healthful and can improve the air quality within a house. Now, depending on how much material's on the wall, whether it be a skim coat or a plaster or a full-blown clay wall, you're going to vary how much impact, positive impact, they can have on the space. Different materials have different properties. So a lime plaster, for instance, is known to be a biocide. That's how it was used on farms, washing, the, the lime whitewash to clean spaces in a farm. And so a lime whitewash can be used um, within, a, within a space to, again, help with the air quality. Clay is super absorptive, so it can take in both moisture and chemicals, alter them, alter the chemicals, release the moisture, and even cementitious ones can certainly help manage the moisture in a building. So by having these kind of materials inside a house, we can improve the air quality. Natural ventilation is something a little different than natural construction. It can be applied in any home, be it stick frame, masonry, or natural construction. The challenge is most people get natural ventilation wrong. Most people think that if they don't have a bathroom fan, they can open a window and that all the moisture will go out. Well, that depends. It depends on which way the window's facing. 
Where do the prevailing winds come from? What is the stack effect going on within the house? So in fact, you could be driving that moisture deeper into your house and actually causing damage. So we need to think about natural ventilation differently. We need to think about how the building interacts with the environment around it. Where does the prevailing wind come from? Where do the storm winds come from? Are we on the ocean? Are we on a mountain? Are we in the woods? Do you even get ventilation around, air movement around your house? So it's important to think about that and understand some of the usage because it can cause damage if not used properly. Now properly designed natural ventilation allows stack effect, allows for that hot air to rise safely and effectively and exchange that air. In a case like the room we're in, we have a patio on one side and we have operable windows on the other side. And by simply cracking both of these windows, we're actually going to get a flow through across this room. And that's going to clean the air, especially while we're cooking or maybe have a lot of people in here. And that helps actually exchange the air. Because natural ventilation is about exchanging the air. For every cubic foot of air that leaves, there has to be a cubic foot of air that comes in somewhere. And if you're just opening one window, you're not getting natural ventilation. You're sucking in from the rim joist, which is going to be filthy. So you're actually going to pull in crappy air in the house. So natural ventilation is important to understand a bit more about the physics and about how air moves. So I'm Brian Fuentes in, uh, here in Boulder, Colorado. We're with uh, Fuentes Design Architects and this is the straw bale house we built for our family uh, here in South Boulder. Brian, this is a beautiful place you have here. Oh, thanks. Um, what made you decide to use straw? Well, I uh, was a student at University of Oregon in uh, 1996 and I worked in the first straw bale house in Eugene and I fell in love kind of with the tactile qualities of straw bale just the curviness of the walls and the softness of it um, how it felt so massive and safe and quiet uh, and then as I progressed in my career I learned more about the energy benefits of straw bale and um, coming back to Colorado uh, here you know we have a lot of sun uh, we have a lot of uh, sun in the winter which is very nice for winter heating and the mass also helps keep the house uh, really warm with a passive solar design in the winter. So besides just wanting to build a straw bale house since I was in college, I think it was uh, somewhat aesthetics and somewhat performance. But I think uh, living in one now, it's just, uh, it feels really kind of uh, peaceful and calm here. So I'm curious about the aesthetics perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I like when I was building straw bale homes is the fact that you don't have square anywhere. <laughs> and how was that a challenge with you building um, with windows and with doors, um, but still having that natural, that natural undulation to the building. Yeah, I mean, it definitely adds a layer of uh, complexity and detail to every intersection of, or joint of the building. But that, uh, it, like Louis Kahn said, you know, uh, you know, it's the adoration of the joint that creates beauty. So we, um, we really tried to enjoy you know, the building of this house as an art piece, like a piece of furniture. And I think... Um, seeing it to completion from, from the rough bales and, and putting your hands in the clay and you know rubbing it onto the straw and feeling that and then the final troweling of the finish line plaster. There's a certain level of satisfaction in building your own house and, uh, and really experiencing how the wall is made um, that I think you don't get with a conventional construction. I agree there's a tactile and a visual interaction that just happens on levels we can't process. Yeah. From an insulation perspective, you're in a cold climate, I come from a cold climate as well. How are you finding it's performing? Yeah, well it's, it's really good. You know, I think some of the R value tests for straw bale have shown, you know, in the two to three range. Some of the tests that have been done in Europe actually show uh, tests in the higher threes per inch, R per inch, based on uh, bales of a nine pound per density uh, in a dry situation. And we're in a very dry climate, so typically the bales are very dry. And what we also don't see in a steady state R value test is the, uh, the mass of the bales, I think, in our climate. Because when you do a steady state test, you're cooling the wall down on one side um, for a long period of time. But here in Colorado, we get these rapid temperature changes. So one day in January, it's going to be 65 degrees outside, and the next day it's minus 5. Right. So we can get 70 degrees in a day. So as long as we get sun in for a few days, this house can coast through some cold, cloudy days without any problem. And I think that's not just due to the steady state R value of the bales, but that kind of thermal mass benefit 
um, that Oak Ridge National Labs did some preliminary testing on that hasn't really been studied fully, but I, I really believe that um, that makes a huge difference here uh, versus houses that we built of the same construction with a lower mass construction that don't seem to perform quite as well yeah. um, just because they can't uh, store that little extra bit of heat that we get because sure. we do get plenty of sun on yeah. most days. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. You touched on the topic of uh, moisture and the, I know straw bales have the, a great <clears throat> storage capacity for moisture and I'm just wondering, living in a really dry climate that you do and cold, how are you finding in the wintertime, is the house dry? Yeah, so we, uh, one of the technologies that we have in this house is we have an energy recovery ventilator. So it has an enthalpy wheel that recovers some of the moisture um, that we generate from cooking and bathing. And um, it, usually it's pretty good. I think sometimes if we're gone, if we leave for the weekend and come back, the house maybe is a little dry because no one was in here making moisture. But if we're here living and running around, it's, um, it's really pretty comfortable compared to any forced air house that I've ever lived in. And actually I'll get, sometimes now when I go to a forced air house, I'll get like a nosebleed because I'm not used to it. <laughs> so you get spoiled living in a house like this um, that has an energy recovery ventilator that has, um, you know, that can store a lot of the moisture in the, in the assembly. And, um, and so, yeah, it's, it's definitely more comfortable. Yeah. And I think some of our clients might want to add some additional humidity. They might be very sensitive. I think we're not super sensitive to it. So just the ERV seems to be enough. Having right. both of those, the ERV and the, the plaster walls to help take some of that moisture and release sure. it between the two of them, it makes for a comfortable space. Yeah. Um, from a young family, mm -hmm. um, from a health perspective, was there any reasons that you decided to go with straw bale? Yeah, absolutely. I think both my wife and I were professional athletes um, on the mountain bike and cross bikes. And so we were very attuned to um, our health because uh, we were t uh, had a a lot of time training really hard and so your body was always kind of at the verge of getting sick because <laughs> you're pushing yourself so hard. So being able to come home to a space that was super healthy and clean um, that wasn't going to you know, um, work against your respiratory system, which for cycling you're pushing your respiratory system right. to the maximum. So uh, we were wanted to be in a space that was really healthy and then when we ended up having a baby, obviously we were very happy to have the natural plasters and um, all the wood finishes here are just uh, natural uh, coconut oils or linseed oils or uh, beeswax. Even the showers here are uh, made of Tadalact, which is a Moroccan lime plaster. So that's uh, just olive oil soap over the lime plaster, burnished, hand burnished with a stone. Yep. So we don't have any um, you know, chemicals in this house for finishes, so it feels really nice to be in a really clean space um, where everything's wood and plaster and concrete. So it's um, very... Yeah, clean and healthy. We do have some area rugs that need vacuuming, especially with the kid running around, but, uh, <laughs> and furniture, all. but but yeah. As yeah. do we all. Well, the space is a really amazing space. It's beautiful, it's healthy, it's super energy efficient, and I'm really grateful that you've taken the time to let us come in here and have a look around. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you, and I'm glad you're, uh, we're getting to share a little bit of this with the uh, outside world and let our people know how great it is to live in a straw bale house. That's great. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.